Hi there everybody, and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be repairing the automated curtain system in an old theater here in Oklahoma City. The system is operated with a cable that's spooled onto and off of a big drum. In the opening scene there, you saw the mechanical timer that operates everything. The cable had started to fray. It's a steel cable, uh, about 1 16th of an inch, pretty high strength, with a cloth sheath over it and that sheath was fraying off and then jamming the system up. Last year I band-aided it just to get it running for a little while until they could you know justify the cost of replacing the cable itself and here we are actually doing that. Fortunately I was able to use the old cable to fish the new cable through. Right here you see in yellow that original high-strength steel cable The cable goes through each of the carriers that hold the curtain there, and that's one of the reasons that this has to be done pretty slowly and meticulously, is that if you get one of those off, the whole system will bind. Once the cable's fed through each one of those, it goes through a carrier at the end that it gets secured onto with some little lock nuts or cable clamps. and. I've removed those and I'm going to string them back on right there and in the end we'll tighten them up to correctly position the curtain. Now I've got to pull through about 175 feet of cable here which was a whole lot of fun to do after each step of this process. Fortunately, the theater has this old man lift. It's probably circa the 70s, uh, but it did make the job easier. I've also got to stretch out the cable after each operation so that there's no kinks in it, because any one of those would be a position where you, where the cable might bind or rub and wear out prematurely. The man lift has these big outriggers that have to be set every time I move it. It's a whole lot of fun. Now when you do uh, this sort of work I do, making and fixing things, you get a reputation with business owners for being the guy to call, and that's what this was. I got a call the day before Thanksgiving saying that their system was bound up and they had a an event uh, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So here I am, this is uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving, and fortunately I was able to source some cable over the holiday and get it installed. This high strength steel cable uh, is actually too strong for me to cut with any of the wire cutters I had with me, but fortunately I've got one of these DeWalt uh, cordless grinders and that made quick work of it. The cable gets run through a pulley at the end there and then back through all those carriers again. And this was the side where it had bound up and finally broken. So there's a whole bunch of junk to clean out of the pulleys. So cut all that out because it's pretty boring. Once again, it's got to go through each carrier, perfectly in line. There's the end of the broken cable. And those little lock nuts, I, or cable clamps, really didn't want to lose those because I had no idea where to get some, especially on short notice. But there we go again, back down on the man lift. And it squeaks to all hell. Fortunately for me, I don't have a fear of heights, and I'm used to working on wobbly platforms or towers up high, so this didn't freak me out, but uh, that man lift shook around quite a bit when you're up there. So we're here at the end, and we're going through the final pulley. This keeps the cable nice and taut up in the track system, so you know, it doesn't dip and nobody can see it. And it doesn't have any play or slack in it. The motor's mounted up on this platform, which is above a flight of stairs. So it's real easy to get to. You know, there, there weren't all the OSHA rules we have now for access to things uh, back when this theater was built. Here I'm stringing the cable back into the drum the way the old cable was. 
and it takes me a little while to realize that the old cable was strung in there backwards. The drum has grooves cut into it, uh, like a spiral, and when you spooled this up, the spiral threads cut across the cable. It shouldn't really be a big deal, uh, except that it'll wear the cable out faster than you'd like for it to. So I sit here and mess with it for a little while, trying to get the tension right, before I realize that the problem is that the threads go the wrong way. So I end up taking it all apart. Now part of the problem with a new cable is that it's going to stretch a little bit over time. So I have to pull out all the tension in the system and actually pull the whole track system towards the motor by about four, five inches so that as it stretches out over time, or especially when the theater heats up in the summer, the curtain moves back to exactly where it's supposed to be as the cable stretches. So here we go with a little bit of jump to where I've got the cable spooled up on the correct side of that spool connected to the motor. Start out with uh, four or five wraps so that you have a little bit of extra cable in the system if you ever need to shorten it or lengthen it or anything like that and that actually saves me here at the end a little bit. As I spool it out I've got to keep tension on it again just to keep the curtain in the right position as the cable stretches. Now the big problem here is that I've got to keep all that tension and still get the cable to wrap around the spool and then go into the little hole that connects into or secures to. And I'm just having a hell of a time here doing that until I eventually realize right here that if I take one wrap off the other side, I can get an extra wrap on the side I'm now trying to secure. And that extra wrap gives me enough friction so that it holds in place while I get the cable secured to the spool. And that's what we're going to do right here. Now it looks a little precarious and I cut it out a bunch, but on the control box right there you can see that there are two switches. The one in the front is a safety cutoff and the one in the back operates the system. And I am making sure to hit that safety cutoff every time because I would not want to get my sleeve pulled into this system. That would really wreck my day. Uh, it does also have an overload switch, but I'm pretty sure it would break my arm before that switch would trigger. Now here I'm just getting the last of the slack out and making that cable line up a little bit nicer so it's, you know, it's pretty and it doesn't have any chance of crossing over on itself and rubbing. We'll operate it one more time just to make sure that everything's running smoothly. Now I've drawn the curtains close to the center and I've got to go up there with the motor in the closed position and use those little cable clamps to secure the curtains all the way closed. They overlap by about two feet at the top which is nice because it gives you a perfectly closed seam and you have a little bit of play in there in case the cable does stretch or those cable clamps slip a little bit, anything, you get a little bit of overlap. With that done, we're going to run the curtain open. And I've synced up the little mechanical timer to it. It's got those little plastic plungers that flick a switch on the bottom that changes the direction of the motor. And this one is done. This is the sort of job where you get a great sense of satisfaction at the end. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.